Hey, what is up guys? This is Phil Life from MoboxGraphics.com and today we are going to create this line artwork which is inspired by Sergei Maslov. If you want to download the project files I created, you can find these on the Patreon page. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is generate the splines or lines. So on the screen you can see some landscapes which are generated with Cinema 4D and you can see the spline outcome above them. So you can already tell there are some differences in the complexity of the line artworks. So overall you can say that the softer landscapes are giving a more simplified line artwork, very clean. While the rougher ones are getting very complicated and maybe even too busy when you zoom in. It's up to you which one you want, but we will go for something that is just in between. So I'm going to open a new document and let's get started by creating a landscape object. Right now it is very flat, that isn't the ideal situation to generate the splines, so let's increase the height of this to something like 400 centimeters. So that looks better. It's still a bit jaggy and rough at the tops, so let's decrease the rough furrows and the fine furrows to zero. That way we have a nice and soft landscape. But right now you can already tell it is a bit simple in the shape, we want more points, so we have more cores or circles in the artwork. So let's disable the multifractal option. That way you can see we have more geometry going on at the center. So when this is done, you don't need to touch any of this. But I would advise, if you want to change stuff, don't go with too many segments, because it will be a bit rougher on the edges of the splines we are going to generate. But for now the defaults should be fine. So let's make this landscape editable. And now we can go in the edge mode. And you can see this is the geometry which is being generated. But there are no straight lines, so we need to do this manually. You can do that by pressing K and J, or right clicking and finding the plane cut tool. And when you hover you can see we're just selecting some kind of small polygons or points even. So let's change the plane mode from free to local. That way you can see we're having a line, but it is going straight up instead of horizontally. So let's change the plane direction actually to XZ. That way we have the horizontal line, but just one. So what we need to do now is increasing the number of cuts. You can go for a large number, something like 50. That way you get this. Also something you should notice is that you need to aim at the top of the mountain to get the cuts all the way to the bottom. If you start at the bottom, it doesn't make any cuts above it. So now you can see these will be the lines that we are generating. But before we click on this and make the cuts, you could also say that you want more lines, for example, so the lines will be closer together in the artwork. If you want to do that, increasing the number of cuts doesn't help, so for example if I make this 100, it's still the same. And that is because the spacing is still set at 10 centimeters. So if we lower this to, for example, 5 centimeters, you get a lot more cuts. But I think 10 centimeters is just fine, otherwise it's a bit busy. So we have this and one more thing we need to do before making the cuts is making sure we have select cuts enabled. That way if we click on this we have the cuts selected as the function says of course. Otherwise we would have to manually select everything and that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So with these selected we can go ahead and press shift and C on the keyboard to make a search for a command and just type edge to spline and hit enter. That way we have a new spline as a child of the landscape. So let's drag this outside of it and we can even hide the landscape for now. So this is our spline. But right now it is still shaped as a mountain, we want this to be flat. This is easy to fix, just go to the point mode and select all the points by pressing command or control and A. And use the scale tool on the vertical axis and scale down while holding shift to 0%. That way it's totally flat. Let's zoom in on this and see how this looks. And when zooming in you can see we have very rough edges. So make sure the landscape is selected. And we're going to change the spline type to B-spline for example. That should be smooth. But right now nothing is happening because we need to change the intermediate points to something like natural. That way we get a bit more smoothing. Okay, so this looks like an interesting spline artwork so far. But if you render, nothing will happen. So what we need to do now is making sure the spline gets rendered. You could do this with sweep objects, but that will get very heavy on the scene. So instead we are going to make these visible with hair materials. 
So the first thing you need to do to make sure the hair will be visible is right clicking on the landscape spline and under the hair tags you can select the render tag. So now if you render it should be preparing and you can see some of it but this isn't the color we want so we want a bit more control on this. So let's create a new material down here. Make sure you do this from the create menu and go to shader and create a hair material. Let's go inside of this and we can already go to the color tab and you can even delete the first gradient now because we want just one flat color. It's up to you which colors you choose. I'm going with some kind of bright blue. For the roots and the tips and all the other stuff you can keep it at default. Now one more thing we want to do is go into the specular channel and this is set to white by default but in this case I think it looks nicer if we also make this some kind of blue so let's go for something bright blue doesn't need to be that precise. And the last option we are going to check is the thickness. We want this to be equally as thick at the root as on the tip. So one centimeter is a good value, so let's copy that to the tip. Okay, so let's drag this material to the landscape and render again to see how this looks. So that's a bit better already. Maybe for the specular we can also decrease this a bit. Let's say something like 30% maybe, so it isn't as harsh. Okay, that looks a bit better. So this could be just fine for you if you just want one spline artwork. But I think it looks nicer if we add some more dimension to it by adding some splines below this one. So we can just use a copy of it. So let's create a second one. And we're going to lower this just a bit below the original one. Now if you have everything deselected it can be a bit messy. Um, you can't see which one is which. So what I like to do is selecting the first one for example and go to the basic tab. And then here you can select the use color option. So turn that on. And let's stay with white for this one. So it's the top one. We want it to be the brightest. This color is only applied in the viewport. So it's just for a visual reference. Now for example we can use the second one. Also turn on the colors and make this a bit more gray. And I also want a third one and we're going to lower this one even more. Something like this. And let's turn this one very dark. So now it's a bit easier to see what is going on in the viewport. Now these all have the same material. So I want some more variation. So let's make a copy of this original hair material. And we are going to change the color of course. To something darker. For this second material we can also keep the thickness as it is. Let's just drag this material on top of the second spline. And now for the third one, so that's the bottom one. We are going to create one more material or a copy of it and make this even darker. But for this one let's also increase the thickness to something like 5 centimeters even. Because it's a bit in the distance and it can be a bit larger as well. Okay. So let's take a render and see what this gives. Right now this looks very messy. Um, it's also because of the camera position and we don't have any depth of field, so no blurriness in the distance. But first let's also create a floor object. So we have a blue background instead of just the black void. So we have the floor. Let's make sure it's below all of the splines. You may even want to go in the front view for example to make sure it's below everything. We are going to create a material for this. This can be a very dark blue and we're also going to add a noise texture to this. Let's go inside of it and it's best to just create the colors inside of this as well. It's a bit of a extra work but let's just do this. So let's start with the same color as we just made for the whole layer. And we're going to create a second color which is a bit darker. The default option should be fine but we're going to decrease the mix strength a bit so we can see a bit of the darker part through it. Doesn't really matter that much, but I found this to be looking very nice. So let's drag this on the floor object and maybe get a closer camera view and render again. So in this case I think I can even raise up the second spline a bit closer to the other one. Let's go in the front view to make sure we know what we are doing. Now you could just make a still image of this, so in that case you can skip this step. But I would like to add some motion to this and we can do that in many ways. 
I tested out a lot of options, um, most of them give very rough lines, and we don't want that. We want smooth curves, so what I found to be the best option out of all of them is creating a displacer deformer. So let's drag this one under the first spline to start with. And the first thing we're going to do is go into the object mode maybe. And I'm going to change the direction from vertex normal to spherical. I think that looks the smoothest. A second thing we can do is already decreasing the height because 10 centimeters is a bit much. Let's go for 4 centimeters. And also something I noticed is that I didn't want them to go up and down. I just want them to be moving along the spline, so on the horizontal plane. What we can do for that is changing the type to RGB XYZ local. That way we have the least amount of movement up and down on these points. So right now nothing is happening of course, I just set these up because that's what I found to be the best. Now we need to add a shading texture to this, so let's go to the shading tab and let's click on the shader button to add a noise. So in that case you can notice we are having a difference in the splines, still a bit rough. Let's go inside of this because we have a bit too much movement. And we can change that by increasing the size of the global scale of the noise. So let's go for double of the original, so 200%. That way the curves are a bit bigger. And one more thing we need to do to make this move while playing this is adding some animation speed. Let's go for something like 0.5. That way it's a nice and slow movement. I can already tell it will not loop. You can fix that by using the loop period, but it's not that easy to explain. It's a bit of trial and error. So let's just aim for this as a non-looping animation. Okay, so that is set up. Let's do the same thing with the other landscape splines. So we can just copy and paste the displacer under them as well. That way everything moves in the same kind of way. Now one more thing we can do to make this a bit more interesting is adding some small spheres in the sky which are just floating around. So let's start with creating a sphere. I'm also going to pause this. This one is very big of course, so let's decrease the size to something like 0.2 centimeters. Now we are going to create a cloner for this, so we can make a lot of copies. Let's drag the sphere inside of this, click on the cloner, and we're going to change the mode to grid array. Let's set the count to something like 20 on both axes, except for the y axis. We don't need them to go up that much. And now you can just scale the cloner um, with the handles, so the yellow dots. It doesn't need to be that large vertically. And we're just going to extend this to the edges of the spline. Something like this will do. So these are now perfectly aligned to the grid, which isn't that dynamic. And they're also not moving. So let's go and add a random effector to this. Make sure the cloner was still selected while adding this. And we are going to go to the parameter tab. And let's just keep the random position as it is right now. But we're also going to enable the scaling option with a uniform scale. So it scales in proportion. Let's go with a value of one at most wouldn't go much larger, otherwise the spheres get too big. And we're going back to the effector tab to change the random mode to noise. That way we get a bit of movement in them. But you can see this is going very fast. So let's change the animation speed to even 1%. This can be very slow. Okay, so that's nice. Let's create a material for these spheres as well. Let's just disable all the channels and enable the luminous channel so we have white spheres, which are very bright. And let's drag that on the sphere object, of course. Okay, now one more thing we are going to do is add a camera object. So we can already position it like we want it to. You can use any focal length you like. I like to zoom in a bit so it flattens out everything. And let's go with a position like this, for example. We're also going to add some motion to this, but I want it to be targeted to the center point. So what we can do is manually create a target camera, create a null object. Let's go out of the camera view for now. So we can position this maybe at the top view first. So we want this to be centered at this point and we want the upper spline to be in focus. So we need to lower this null. So it lines up with this spline right here. So that's okay. Now right click on the camera Cinema 4D tags and add the target tag. And we can add the null in the target object field. And that way the camera will always be focused on the center point. 
Okay, so with that done, we can create a quick animation. So let's start like this and go to 90 frames, for example, and make a small movement and create a new keyframe. So that adds a bit of dimension to all of this. Okay, so one more thing we want to do is adding the depth of field to this. The easiest way in Cinema 4D is to enable the physical mode and under the physical options, we can enable depth of field. Also, while we're in this, let's add a glow effect. This will make it look a bit nicer and a bit more futuristic if you want to call it like that. And now under the camera options, we need to determine what will be in focus. So let's go down here and we can set the focus object, which will be the null. So that's very convenient in this case when you use a target camera. Now we need to set how blurred out everything will be. So let's go to the physical tab and we're going to change the f-stop. It depends on how far away you are from the object and how much of a zoom you have on the lens. But in this case I think something like 0.6 will do. Also while you're just working and testing out the look of this, you don't want to wait long for the renders, so under the physical options you can keep the sampling quality on low, which it is by default. But if you want to make the final render, I recommend going for medium or even high to make it really smooth on the blurred parts. Otherwise it will be a bit grainy. Okay, and one last thing I would like to add to this animation is some kind of electric shock on the splines. So let's go with just the upper one. So that's this one. Let's duplicate this somewhere further away so we know it's this one. And we're going to create a sweep object and drag it inside of there. To make this a sweep we need a second spline, so let's create a circle for example. And this one will need to be very small of course, so let's go for something like 0.7 for this on the radius. So that means it's actually double the size, so that will be 1.4 centimeters all the way through, which is bigger than 1 centimeter thickness on the hair. So that's great. Let's drag it as the first child of the sweep object. You can see this is being generated very slow. Let's add a material on this, which will be a normal material. You can keep the color and reflectance turned on, but let's just add a luminance to this, which will be some kind of blue again. Let's drag it on top of there. But now you can see the whole spline is being overwritten with this sweep object, so we don't want that, we want that shockwave animation. So what we need to do is using the sweep options, and we have this start and end growth. And that will be the options we use to control this animation. So let's start with something like zero start growth and just 10 end growth. Like this, you can't see it in the viewport just yet. And let's go for maybe just 20 frames later. And we're going to change the values to 90 and 100 and make new keyframes. And one more important thing to do is creating a keyframe after this, where we go to 100 again on both values so it is being finished then the same thing goes in front of it where we have both at zero otherwise we always have something showing up in the distance or something so let's play this again and it will be slow in the viewport but it shouldn't matter if you render this out anyway you can see this will be the animation which is happening so that is basically all there is to this. As you may have noticed, this is just a combination of a lot of small techniques. So I hope these will be very useful for you in the future. If you want to download the project files I created, you can find these on the Patreon page. And if you feel like sharing your own results, feel free to send it to us on Instagram or Twitter. I hope you learned something new today, and I will see you in the next video.